Welcome back everyone. I'm Dan and this is Plant Abundance on YouTube. I just got done finishing a really cool gardening project building a compost trommel and I want to share with you how I put this together. So the driving force behind this trommel build is none other than a concrete mixer. I picked this up over at Harbor Freight. This is a 3.5 cubic foot mixer. I got it for a good deal using one of the coupons they send out. What makes this excellent for a trommel is the fact that you can easily rotate the bucket here in all directions. It'll lock in at any position. Now a great thing about this build is that we're not going to change anything about the mixer itself. We're just going to add on to it. So you can use it as a concrete mixer. This can also be used as a really good soil mixer. So if you want to throw in some compost, some other soil amendments, you can make some really good potting mix. So it's actually a three-in-one machine here. Now for the actual trommel, I'm using this 48-gallon outdoor steel waste container. We want to attach it to the mixer like so. As you can see, it's got this really strong expanded metal. It's got good support structure throughout the basket. All in all, very heavy duty. Actually weighs 35 pounds. Now I went with the red basket because it was the cheapest in price. They had the same exact and different colors, but it was quite a bit more expensive. So I went with the red. So to attach the basket to the mixer, I'm going to be using these one and a half inch anchor points and then these turnbuckle eye hooks. And the way these work, if you weren't aware, is when there's tension on either side, you can turn the buckle here and it'll either expand or get smaller. Now I really would have preferred getting a double hook rather than an eye and a hook, but I wasn't able to find any locally and online they were pretty expensive. So I came up with a solution. By using a pair of bolt cutters you can easily cut away at the eye and turn it into a hook. But if you can find the double hook turnbuckles that'd be the way to go. And by the way these turnbuckles are a quarter inch by seven and three quarter inch. And I will be giving you a complete breakdown of all the materials and tools needed to complete this build towards the end of this video. But when you make your cuts, the main thing is you just want to make sure you left enough room so that you can slide in the hoop of the anchor point. So the first step is going to be to attach these anchor points to the cement mixer. And we're going to be doing that using these hex bolts. And these are a quarter inch by three quarter inch long. And we'll also be using some quarter inch flat washers and some quarter inch nylon lock nuts. I went with the lock nuts because there is going to be a lot of vibration. I just don't want those to come off eventually. Now before we install the anchor points, I want to show you how the bottom of the wastebasket has these pre-drilled pilot holes. They're evenly spaced and you can see how every other hole has a support beam with a shallow lip so we won't be able to get a hook under there. But in between, those holes are going to be perfect. We just need to drill it out a little wider. So to drill the holes, I used a 7 seconds inch drill bit that will cut through metal. And you can see the hook just slides in there just perfectly. So now I'm just widening every other hole here. And now we can slide in the rest of the turnbuckles. That was easy. Now we're going to set this to the upright position and put the basket right on top. This way we can align where we want to put the anchor points. So I visually set up one of the anchor points and put a couple dots to drill the holes. And now to make sure I get all those anchor points set at the same level, I went ahead and took a measurement up to the first black dot, which was one and a half inches. And now I can go around the rest of the concrete mixer and measure up that distance and know that's where I want to set the bottom hole. Now looking back, if I was going to do this project all over again, I would have actually set those bottom holes two inches above the lip on the concrete mixer for a couple reasons I'll be sharing with you shortly. Now we can go ahead and start drilling our holes into the mixer. I'm going to start off by using a smaller bit, a 7 seconds, and then I'm going to step it up using a 5 16 inch drill bit. Just makes it easier to drill the holes exactly where you want them. Now 
and the hardware is just going to go in like so. Then on the back side, we're going to use a washer and a lock nut. And to wrench everything down, you're going to need two 11 millimeter wrenches, one to hold the lock nut on the inside and the other to turn the hex bolt. Get it nice and snug, no need to over tighten it. So you can see here on the inside, we've got a little extra bolt sticking out. So you could go with a half inch long bolt instead of three quarter inch. And here's why I said I would have measured two inches up. One issue is that all my measurements weren't precise and because of that, some of the anchor points will lay flat on the concrete mixer and some kind of get stuck on the lip. It's not a problem, but uh, if I would have gone up a little higher, it would have fixed that issue. Now we'll just go ahead and set the basket right back on the mixer and start hooking up the turnbuckles. Now the second reason it would have been a good idea to bring those anchor points up just a little bit is it would have given those turnbuckles more room to spin. Although this wasn't really much of an issue and everything still went together fine, it was kind of a tight squeeze on some of the turnbuckles. Anyway, we're all hooked up now. It's on there nice and tight. Everything's looking good. So when fully set up, this is a two wheelbarrow compost trommel system. And the height of the wheelbarrow does come into play here. I was able to find these Blue Hawk wheelbarrows over at Lowe's. They were the cheapest available. And they have a 22 inch height, which is just perfect for this project. There's other ways you can customize and get around that. I'm sure you can come up with some ideas. But a low profile wheelbarrow works really well. So instead of building a permanent heavy stand to help support the trommel basket, what I'm actually going to be doing is using the wheelbarrow as a support system. For that, I'm using a 2x4 cut about 10 inches longer than the length of the wheelbarrow. Then I'm going to attach to the 2x4 these 3 inch rubber rigid caster wheels. Pick these up over at Lowe's as well. The rest of the hardware I got over at Home Depot. And I'm going to be using quarter inch by two inch hex bolts to attach these casters to the 2x4. And again, the flat washers and nylon bolts. Now that the wheels are attached, I'm going to be drilling a 3 8 inch hole straight through the plywood and through the wheelbarrow as well. And the reason for this is I'm going to be securing this 2x4 to the wheelbarrow using a 3 8 inch by 4 inch eye bolt. And it's a nice tight fit through the 2x4 and will actually thread right into that hole that we just drilled into the wheelbarrow. So now everything's attached and rigid. So now that that's attached, we're going to give some added strength and rigidity to the system by drilling some one inch holes on either side of the plywood on the outside of the wheelbarrow. Then I'm going to insert these three quarter inch wide by four foot long metal stakes right through the hole and into the ground. It's just going to help keep everything in alignment so it doesn't jiggle out of place. And that's working really nice. Now having a little bit of play, a little bit of wobble in the system is okay. If we had it too rigid, you might create some stress at certain points in the system that could create damage down the line. Like you can see here with the waste basket, it's not a perfect circle, so having a little bit of play actually helps the system function better. I just want to point this out. If we move away the caster wheel support, you can see how much slack there is in the actual concrete mixer. So this setup really does a good job holding the weight, taking the stress off of the mixer itself. And you can see the concrete mixer itself moves around a little bit. 
which isn't a big issue, but if you just drive down a stake right at the base where the handle is, that's gonna help keep it from moving around too much. And then again, by the wheels, I just stuck in another metal stake just to kind of keep things in alignment. And everything's looking good, coming together nicely. Just a couple more things to do. For one, I'll be creating an insert to go inside of the trommel using quarter inch hardware cloth. This is so we can sift out even a finer grade of compost. So I just took some quick measurements to figure out what I was gonna need. Now the length of the basket is just under three feet, so you could use three foot hardware cloth. I had two foot on hand, and I found in the end that having the two foot hardware cloth actually worked out better. By having two sections, I was able to really create a nice formative basket that'll fit right in. A great way to cut hardware cloth is with some metal shears. This is a great tool to have around the homestead. So anyway, this is what I ended up with using a bunch of zip ties, came together nicely. And what I did is at the bottom and at the top, I kind of folded over those sections, which gave it even more rigidity. And this will just slide right in. You can make different size screens. You can also use a half inch insert if you want more of a mulch. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is cover those drainage holes that are at the bottom of the wastebasket. And I'm gonna do that using this coconut fiber. Now you could use just about anything, a piece of plywood, plastic, cardboard. But this is what I got on hand. This will do a good job. Just press fit it in and actually it also works as a bit of a trim piece right towards the base of the basket you can see not all of the hardware cloth is completely flush so the cocoa fiber cut a little large helps to trim that out so let's go ahead and flip on the machine and give it a go And here's what a typical load of unfinished compost looks like around here. We got wood chips, weeds, little rocks. So here we go, first shovel full. Uh. Do. Okay, my bad. I need to actually attach this screen insert to the trommel itself. I'm going to do that using a bit of this insulated wire. I want it to be easy to remove if I need to. So we'll just kind of feed this through and twist it up. That way, if I need to take it out, it just takes a second. And we'll do that on opposite sides, just two attachment points. All right, let's give this another try. There we go. Now it's working. So everything you see falling out of the front end are all the larger pieces. We got wood chips, dirt clods, weeds. And on the back end, we got some nice, finely sifted compost. I just want to say that I got a lot of great ideas off of YouTube for this project. And this is my own spin on it, no pun intended. But I'd like to send a special shout out to YouTuber Greg Smith. There was a couple videos he put up that gave me a lot of ideas, especially with the anchor points and the turnbuckles. It was a great way to attach the trommel. So I'd encourage you to go check out his channel. I'll drop a couple links to those videos below mine in the description box. All in all, this is a very efficient system. It's working beautifully. I couldn't be more happy with the outcome. This is gonna save me a lot of time in the garden and help me to create copious amounts of compost. This stuff is so good too. You could use it for compost tea. You can use it for your potted plants if you're doing seedlings.
And all the bulky stuff left here in the second bin. If there's no weeds in there, you can definitely use this to mulch around your fruit trees and such. Or if you got weeds, or if you just want to let it break down a little bit more, you can pile this up in the corner of a yard in the chicken run like what I do and let it continue to break down. Another great thing about using the metal stakes when you need to go dump your bulk load, you can just lift up the whole support system and kind of wedge it on those stakes and then you're good to go dump. When you come back you just set everything right back up the way it was and everything's right in place. Now this is a mobile unit. I'm going to show you how easy it is to move this to another area in the yard. I'm going to be working on this compost heap in the chicken run now. Another important factor to mention is the moisture level in your compost really does come into play in a system like this. If it's too wet, you're going to get a lot of clumps that are coming out that aren't fully breaking down. And if it's too dry, you're going to get a lot of dust flying around. So you want to try to find that good balance. Now I've just got an area where I'm stockpiling some of the soil for later use. Good stuff right here. <laughs> 